Hey everyone, Blake here, Black Out the M&M, again with Bob. Hey, Blank Tester is and, my username. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and Yella. I exist. And we are continuing right where we left off. All these episodes are going to be like that. Nice. So, you're, yeah. Pretty much the only thing I cut were the saves and, the like I said, that 40 minutes, like 30 to 40 minutes where I just came back here much later in the game and used a bunch of skills so that I could unlock the final skills in the skill tree because this game even though i power game and just use three characters the uh, later moves in the skill tree you s i still needed to come back uh, and just keep using skills over and over and over and over again to round out the trees so i wouldn't just be using the final skills for like the last two fights oh boy we got a hat <laughs> i got a has got a hat you know the inclusion of like frozen trolls is is that's cute for like a little hobbit reference i guess but like it would be cute if they placed them in one place it's yeah, a lot less cute that they've got them all over the place like trolls also, don't know how their powers work and uh all turn to stone all the time and it's a constant threat for them because they're too stupid to yeah. The high. Well, it's also a lot right. less charming in the, you know, grim, dark Peter Jackson uh, art style. Yeah. And I'm not someone who hates the movies. I, I enjoy the movies. I remember there were some people but who were like... But it kind of clashes with the... Uh... Yeah. Because they they didn't like the, the grimmer, more like George R.R. R. Martin-esque sort of aesthetic. Yeah. And before anyone... and in ca Just in case you forgot that, uh, yeah, those books were... Those books have been out for a while by the time the movies started. <laughs> Because Game of Thrones books started in the 90s. Yeah. And, th and, that, and th that was what was popular in fantasy novels at the time, was like that darker, grimmer style. I think that's why the movies were the way they were. Sure. I'm glad we're immediately reminded of Elagost's horrible form. Yeah. I, I, I it's hope he so bad. The, I hope he tosses the bow in the air again. <laughs> Once again, critical hit oh, does man. 230. Her regular attack that's guaranteed to hit does 430. Yeah. For Loudwater Fury. Guaranteed what? to hit? Wizards, yeah, spells. Yeah, yeah all magic in video games. spells never miss in this game. Some games yeah. they do, not this one. Yeah. Huh. So not it's, only is it it's super pretty, powerful, but... It's pretty rare in, like, turn-based RPGs that magic has a hit chance. Really? And even that, like, like sometimes it's specific spells that are really strong. Like, in Final Fantasy, the only spells that can miss are, like, Petrify and Death spells. Everything else huh. always hits. Unless, yeah, of course, something has, like, special protection or something. That's why magic users have always traditionally been busted. I mean, from tabletop games all the way into video games. Yeah. How when, of course, in real life, if you me. were shooting a fireball at somebody, of course it, they could get out of the way. I mean, if it was a bolt of lightning, then, yeah, you would never be able to Yeah, that's there's no dodge that ever. I mean, if magic exists, who <laughs> hey, knows? Hey, dodge this, you've got some kind of you've got some kind yeah. of speed magic that... I, I guess you could fire the lightning and just... You could fire it poorly, but I mean, yeah, that's I don't know. even to say that when you cast fire, that it shoots a ball from where you are to the person. Maybe it's just instant fire there. That also. I mean, that, well, yeah, that's well, what I mean, fireball so, does in five E. Yeah. As I'd say, most games, a lot of games will specifically say fireball, and in D and D, yeah, it shoots a ball. No, no, in D and D, it doesn't shoot a ball. It, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's a misconception. You you pick a spot within sixty feet, and then it explodes from there. Nice. Oh man, that's lame. It's much better to check a fireball. Like when you're LARPing, you just throw a, an apple at somebody. I mean, that's... that's for, that you need, you, for that, you need the spell Firebolt. Mm. Yeah. I like I like being able to just make make fire or whatever happen in a spot. Yeah, Yeah, that's why you learned magic in real life. Yeah, that's why I'm a wizard. Yeah. You're a wizard, yellow. <laughs> and look at the... They, they love... The bloom effects in this game. There's so much bloom on everything. Yeah. At least yeah. it's not that one bloom effect that causes. Uh, I just realized. Bars. I just realized exactly, yeah. that that bowcraft and and ranger craft are two different things, which seems yeah. a bit weird. Also, well, yeah, what is that? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's just I don't know. Yeah. I absolutely adore the the little portraits they've got. The square portraits. Uh, in yeah. The horn order, because yeah. everybody looks either angry or sad. <laughs> Barathor looks super sad. He looks like he looks so sad. Like calm you know down, the, Barathor. You remember the meme where it's like, how did you? 
How did you enjoy PE today? And it has like that one face. You know the one I'm talking about. If I keep saying you know, then you know. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that is how it works. Also, you know what you say? They either look angry or sad. Idriel just looks confused or, or kind of scared. She's a little bit scared slash yeah, she sad to me. Also, that okay, animation well, I will quickly, is so I will, I will quickly put that meme on screen so that way, if you're like, you know, my good friend Bob here and you don't know what oh, I'm talking about, you'll know. Mm. But yeah, how did you do in PE today? He has that middle face. Just put Barathor's face on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hollow inside. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you see right off the bat we left have to right more armor ha for I did good, and then right is I did bad, and the middle is uh, I shadows envelop my soul. I did Barathor, yes. Yeah. Uh, I did Barathor, and not in the fun way. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Barathor would even be pleased about that? Like, uh, judging by his little portrait there, I don't think so. Man, look at that spirit stat. Just yeah, go, that's just goes. growing. Uh. Again, that's that's why it's so busted, because strength and dexterity do not affect anything but melee. So yeah. you get to, you know, using her only as a spellcaster, again, I have to hate on those people who use her for swordplay. You get such an advantage because you get to just ignore two stats. That is huge in a game like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah in a, in Being a game able to just stat ignore allocation. stats. Yeah. <laughs> God, he looks so desperate as he runs. I, I forget yeah, I, which game it was, but I remember a game I played where, like, the only stat that really mattered was critical hit chance. <laughs> so, you just build crits, and then, you know, the goal was just, if you get a character to 100% crit, they are just 50% stronger all the time. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. And it well, worked there, really well. There, there, there was no I, other I sort stat of that strategy when I played off-camera, but maybe I'll replay it on-camera. Uh, Record of Lodos War for the Dreamcast. Oh. Where... Again, I was I, I, after I beat the game, I looked up other people's strategies, and you know, I don't know what they were doing, but like they were, I, I was literally going to because the map is completely open. It's just a matter of whether or not you can survive. I was able to go to places like twenty levels behind where everyone was recommending <laughs> because what I was doing worked so well, and that was uh, I saved up um, a bunch of mithril, got the custom sword made. Which a lot of people just didn't do. They didn't think it was worth it, but they should have, because that sword ha does the highest crit damage in the game. And so then all you have to do is start upping your crit, mm. and you'll be you'll get a guaranteed crit every time. And most weapons it's like two percent, uh, or it's like two times your damage. For this weapon, it's eight point five times your damage. Oh. So yeah, it takes a little while. I, it was a little rough at first, but once you get to the point where you've upped crit enough that you're landing it pretty much every time, you can go anywhere. You can go in the areas you're not even, you know, really intended to go until much later because you can kill everything in one hit. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I, nobody was mentioned on the guides, and I'm like, y'all not picking up on this, really. Jesus. She just Christ. summoned arrows. Yeah, that's the perfect mode. I did that because uh, spellcasters are the only people who. Uh, well, I don't even know if the, about these early guys, but I know for some of the later ones, they are uh, buffed against magic. They're the only ones who have any sort of spell resistance, usually, mm. or other spell users, and you don't encounter them that often, so... Uh, okay, I, I mentioned this before. He looks so wonky when he's running. He kind of looks like, like a small child dressed up in an outfit his mom made on Halloween. <laughs> you know? Like, I it. like, because he leans forward, he looks even shorter. And then he kind of just has this, like, wide run with his arms swinging out to the side and his silly little helmet. Oh, God, this animation. This animation is no. so bad. It's just like. I really, really wish that you could skip the attack animations in this game because. Oh, you can't turn them off. No, can't turn them off, can't skip them. So, especially the later ones. Uh, like Water Stallion, her final Take you know, spell. Yeah. Oh, it takes probably about 20 to 30 seconds. Oh my Jesus Christ. It, I mean, awful. it's just... It takes forever. And everything Elagos does, he has to do that huge charge. 
So that's why I'm glad I don't have to use him uh, for much longer. It's, nice one. It honestly, it feels like... like <laughs> nice. Uh, when they whip, it looks, it's such a whip. It's like they're like five feet off. It's so great. Yeah, they're, they're not even close to hitting. Like the moment-to-moment -moment interactions with these like... You know, like the characters interacting with each other actually look very Lord of the Rings, very fantasy yeah. and sort of gritty and whatever. But like everything in between has just like a bunch of jank and <laughs> looks like, really kind of adorable. The way he yeah. pulls the arrow. I, I love back their idol so stance weird. though. Like Barathor, if you watch him, you know he looks so cool. Like behind the shield. yeah, every once in a while he'll sort of do like a little test cut at the air. It looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. You see him? Yeah. Yeah. It's super. It's super good. I love that. Like I, I legit love that. Ugh, yeah, God, and the Banes, I haven't... Walk back. Yeah, you see, I haven't actually measured it, but I, I'm kind of curious exactly how much more, because, you know, the the Bane skills, you have, like, you know, Orc Bane, Uruk High Bane, um, Hadhan has Goblin Bane, but there's only, yeah. a, like, a small handful. I haven't actually measured how much more damage they do. Wow. I'm just kind of curious. And so you can see, this is a symptom of how... The game is, like I said, super streamlined. Everything has a star rating. Uh -huh. And as you can see, if I wanted to look at the actual stat bonuses for an item, I have to hold square. It's designed to where, you know, some schmuck who doesn't actually want to think like about kid, what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. But even but it, it's it kind of doesn't work because later on in the game, you will need to actually plan out. Either that or just grind for all eternity until you're, like, level 90. I think I beat the game with... And everyone was in, like, the 60s, their level was. Man, that reminds me of the, the Return of the King game for Xbox. I remember that. I it's beat a that. great game. Yeah. It's very uh, old-fashioned, you know, because of how short it is. It's like playing Golden Axe or something, you know? Yeah. Just and, hack and slash. But it's crazy and, how much... And there's like, co-op, which was very nice. Really yeah, I remember my uh, my sister and I would play that, and when I beat it, I think it's funny how much of the game opens up once, like, after you beat it. Like, there's, like, yeah. what? Like, after you beat it, there's all of these, like, endurance stages. You can replay any of the stages, I think, with any character. And, and a whole bunch of characters unlock. Stuff. Yeah, characters. Like, Frodo unlocks, uh, Faramir unlocks. Faramir is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird how, how they did that, but... It's good. It adds a lot, a lot of longevity to the game. Yeah. I just saw examine. Is that basically scan? Yeah, it's, that yeah, scan it, a person? yeah. It's just, it's just a scan. It just tells you the enemy is like. It tells you everything about the enemy. Oh. What they're immune to, what they're weak to, but you know. Yeah. Really so. Now, right now, it doesn't matter, and later on, it also won't matter because <laughs> I don't. But what I the super cool secret strategy I use means I don't really need to care. <laughs> nice. Plus the best attacks. I mean, it doesn't really matter anyway because if I find out someone's weak to blunt, so what? You know, Barathor only ever has sla only ever does slashing damage, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Dang, these wizards are, are messing you up. I love that when they do their damage, yeah. when they do their big you know, murder of crows thing. Even the even the UI is getting all blurred and shaken and stuff. Like it's like whoa. Even the gamey elements of this game are getting all Lord fucked up by this. It's like freak style, yeah. Yeah. Even there it is. Ha <laughs> 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 <Yeah, see? laughs> That's so bad. I love it. Oh yeah, here we go. This oh, is what boy, more epic for. The scenes. epic scenes. The, the, the epic scene. Oh look, it's this one. <laughs> oh, pretty face there. Hello. Am I giving you guys the? No. Uh, okay. No. no. Oh, I'm feeling it. Corridor Digital did a really good video where they talked to the guys from like, Weta Digital about uh, how they did that shot going into Saruman's, um, into Saruman's basically Urukai factory. It's like one, it's like one continuous take, except or one continuous shot, 
except it's done by stitching together like like three or four mo like uh, motion controlled um, uh, shots across multiple miniaturized rigs so that the camera can pass through the rigs and then um, they've comped in a bunch of you know real elements of of actors walking around being orcs and then other CG elements and stuff. It, it, it was a really cool breakdown. Um, As I said, I think the hardest thing about it was getting all those Urukai to cooperate with the shoot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If they're, they're, they're killing the guys. crew, then it's like... Yeah. You've got like five seconds bef between... You won't believe how much hazard pay some of those people got. Oh, I mean, yeah, it was well earned because... Well, the ones yeah, who survived, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> I can't believe that movie has such a, like, tracks. the making of that movie has Your such a high right. death toll. And the, the weird thing was, small. like, in the DVD I extras, they show a lot of the deaths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like... That's because it was that's kind Peter of, Jackson... It was kind of fucked up, honestly. <laughs> that's because Peter Jackson was sort of at war with, you know... It, it was like... It, it's funny that... It, well, I was gonna say Sam Raimi, because they're both, like, underground-ass directors that ended up doing big mainstream movies. Sam Raimi with Spider-Man, Peter Jackson with Lord of the Rings. And they were both big practical effects guys, so... You yeah, know. I guess. Cause, well, because, like, Sam Raimi... Remember the famous... Oh, shit, like, is this Haddad? Yeah, he's finally gonna come in. Oh, heck yeah. He is not very short for a dwarf. <laughs> oh, when you see him next to everyone else, you'll see he's, he's a little bit short. Okay. But, he just but, looks like I guess he's he is on the tall side. Oh, yeah. Hey. We, but, the, uh, game, the game is already like, hey, you don't want Elagost, right? Here's Hadhod. Exactly. But no, like, you know in Spider-Man, the scene where he catches all the stuff on the tray, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, he really did that. Yeah. They, kept, they dropped all the stuff and he had to catch it. And apparently Sam Raimi originally wanted to have an actual stuntman swinging through New York. Like, they would, like, mount ropes and platforms and have him swing from thing to thing. And finally they said, Sam Raimi, you're going to kill somebody. We cannot do this. <laughs> yeah. He was crazy about his practical effects. And of course, famously, you, if you looked at the behind the scenes, you'll know that Peter Jackson, for like the scene where they're all sitting at Elrond's table, that table is not a straight table. It's like, goes off in all sorts of crazy angles, and it's filmed at this angle that makes it look straight, but they did it that way so that way people could be sitting at different elevations and, and such and be further away from the lens to look smaller or whatever. Yeah, it's on camera. Yeah, it's, there's a whole bunch of camera and like like optical illusions to avoid having the CG people to make them smaller. It's crazy. Yeah, my like, uh, <laughs> God. Frodo and Frodo and Gandalf sitting next to each other. Sitting in the thing, and it's like a big split bench, and they're like super. They're like they're trying to pretend to look, to look at each other. Next to each other yeah. It's amazing. Massive swing, boys. It's a massive swing. Yeah. I mean, it did damage. Also, those portraits, though. Yeah, he looks sad too. Let's see. I didn't take a look at Hadhod's portrait. Yeah, Hadhod looks like he's just done. Like he's he done looks with a everything. Bit, yeah, he looks, he looks a like little a, bit. No, he looks like a corpse. Yeah, he looks a little fish-eyed. <laughs> yeah, he's got those cold codfish eyes. Yeah. Maroon. Oh shit! You learned counterattack, dude. Hey, yeah, counterattack is a not an actual. It's not like a, a repose skill. All it is is now that now there's a chance of counterattacking whenever you're he's attacked. I mean that ain't bad. Oh, okay. That's still nice. Oh yeah. I love oh no, the yeah, especially swing. It, 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 and it gets better with with levels, so you're pretty much guaranteed counterattacks later in the game. Oh, that's which nice. makes which makes that one buff that guarantees you know crits. It's a higher chance of crit, but essentially it means that you crit pretty much every time, and most of the time you double or triple, so that makes counterattacks even more deadly. Mm. Right now, though, like I said early on, you just you have so few skills, all you can really do is just smack this troll. At least He's you have out. axe craft. Also, wait, spirit powers, does that mean Hadhod can do magic? Yeah, he has dwarven fire and earth magic. Nice. Wait, so... You oh, look just... at that. That was, that was great. That is, that is his final shot. He went out on a high note. Yeah. Final Big shot on the whole... Oh, let's play. Oh, let's play. Do what? Is he, just, is he just God now? Are we just not seeing more of Elagos now in, in battle? Except for one instance where it makes you play as him. Yeah, uh, he's done. You no. won't see him until until the end, near the end of the game. 
Oh, again, he went out on a, a good note, though. Yeah, no, he did a good job there. Good job, Elagos. Again, he's not bad. It's just that he doesn't scale well into the end game. He just never ever does good damage ever. Yeah. Yeah, Gandalf. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have. Yeah. I those... thought you met a whole bunch of them that went on a big adventure with Bilbo Baggins. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Actually, I also met like a bunch in these fan fictions and this this game. <laughs> I know many. People. I know so many people, dude. <laughs> but no, the, again, remember, they didn't have the rights to the book, so they had to be careful not to reference The Hobbit there. Yeah. Mm. They Like, if they if they legit directly referenced The Hobbit, they would have it would have been illegal. Yeah. You know what? I wonder, it's though. so funny. Like, like, I wonder, like, he said these stout fellows, but are there also some that are very stout? Oh, exactly. yeah. And some that so are he's weak. very stout against air, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah, I see that. Very stout against air. <laughs> But weak against water, if it, she, you know, he ever gets on Israel's bad side, which I mean, she's yeah. an elf, so she can just blast his face off. Mm-hmm. He'll just get destroyed. I, I still don't think Hadhot is particularly short. Yeah, he he's not as short as like like because like Gimli in the movie goes up the, to like El, like he goes up to Orlando Bloom. We'll just call him his waist. <laughs> Orlando Bloom's yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, Legolas was really just it. not coming into my brain immediately. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Bloom, fuck it. It's just Orlando Bloom. I mean, really, it is just Orlando Bloom. Oh, and also, it's kind of a trope that in RPGs, you'll get a lot of items that you really would rather not use, like in Pokemon, like X accuracy. Mm -hmm. Most people yeah. never will touch that X accuracy. But this game has a weird mix of items that are insanely overpowered, and it intentionally doesn't give you that many. And a whole bunch that are e extremely useless. Wow. Like the useful ones are ones like completely remove a foe's armor value. Whoa! Oh, dang, that is powerful. Which, which means on like the that's and uh, that's one thing every guy got right. They said save those and use them on the final bosses who have like eighty percent armor. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? When the game designers design a boss fight to be beatable with the enemy having eighty percent armor the whole time, and you take the armor away. Yeah, it becomes that, trivial. That just, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you have one that gives you unlimited action points for a battle. Unlimited Those action points. Proud to show. Yeah, look at this. Who are these guys? Who who are those guys? Yeah. They that is a remnant of something getting cut in this stage because they don't help you out here. Oh. And they do not show up afterwards. And they weren't there in the movie. So where yeah. the fu who the fuck were they? Where were they? Huh. Huh. Wait, you said Elagos would be gone. Oh, well, I forgot about this you part. You lied is to me. I did lie to you, but that's because he uh, he is useful here. I forgot about the stupid squid. Mm. Who is right. ranged, so... Ferrothor yeah. is going to just buff everybody, but... uh Havod does have ranged attacks with his magic, but they don't... The Watcher is strong against fire. You would think... Dang. You would think, You'd think the monster is strong against water, but apparently not. Or sorry, well, he's in the water. Yeah, yeah, but then you would expect water to do less because he's already in it. Yeah, oh, well, he's also strong against water. I don't know what he's strong against, but you can see. Uh, Seems like he's was doing weak more against your team. <laughs> yeah. Did he? Is yeah, so he I, winking at me? Oh, he no, blinded he, 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 with he, each eye independently. Yeah, because that looks that does that is like a really creepy effect because it's not. Yeah, except you see like a squid doesn't need to blink at all. It's true. I mean, it's it's a fantasy squid. Who knows what it needs to do? I guess, yeah. Like, it I love how they like look to... around waiting for the attack. Yeah. Nope, that's just Idriel. She just does that, I guess. She just looks around. She's <laughs> constantly aware of her surroundings. This is smart. By the way, you were struggling to uh, remember Legolas's name, and then you. Start of time with something else I wanted to say real quick, but the way I remember Legolas's name is that, uh, uh, you know, when I'm counting off my limbs, I start with my arms and I do my legs, uh, last. So, like, yeah. oh, last, Legolas. That's how I remember it. Okay. Well, I mean, it's I did remember it, that. It really it. helps me remember his name, Legolas. Well, that's yeah. good. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad helpful. you have a system. I, well, yeah. I just... 
Well, I, I always try to to laugh often, so I remember the name of my OC, Laughlin O'Lot. Yeah, Laughlin O'Lot, the Irish comedian. Yeah. Um, Can I just say, by the, LOL. by the way, on the on the um, the squid's portrait, it kind of looks like it has a crazy beard. Yeah, it kind of looks like a dude with a crazy beard. <laughs> Like a dude bit, yeah. is shouting like, ah, get out of here! Say, look, look how it's the that's the worst that flaming fury because he sinks in the water and then pulls up like a marionette and then it just waits for an hour. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why it's like that. Okay. I, yeah, I he, completely he forgot about using that bowstring here. back like so deliberately. Yeah, so that way you can really see about the fact that he's holding it on the underside of the bow. Mm -hmm. yeah. he the gate. Plus one SP spirit power. Oh, well, there you go. We didn't even get to see it die. It it's just dead now, I guess. Okay. Level. Ferrothor oh. does not deserve that much XP. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! Those tentacles left. are power. Uh, apparently, that became a minor meme. Oh. Back in the day. Look at that, he got cut off before he even finished his life! Oh, gosh. <laughs> it looks that, I'm that not cuts supposed to be able to read that, right? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I turn, well, I turned the subtitles, you know. Oh. No, I mean the thing over the loading screen. I'm not supposed to be able to read that, right? It's in, it's in Elvish. <laughs> exactly. help you reclaim it. For your people. Because it vaguely looks like one of the words but, but, is dagger. But, oh I know, pay attention God, to these cutscenes. <laughs> Seven what did she say it was? No, she never said anything. What the fuck? Have hard. Come on, at least listen to what words are being said. Oh, look. Elfin Dwarf, friends again. Yeah, even yeah. though he was a complete asshole and he yeah, continues to no be throughout the whole game. Is it, it just not noteworthy that Legolas and Gimli were friends? Is that just not yeah. noteworthy at all? Well, these people two don't really become friends. Like I said, he remains just a complete asshole the whole well, game. Well, she tries to be friends with him. Yeah. I mean, Which she at least tried to be friendly. Yeah, it's true. Actually, the whole game she does, even though she's kind of a, everyone's kind of a dick, she does try to be nice, and he's just an asshole. But Good. like, nice. in, the, Great. in the Lord of the Rings universe, in Middle-earth, isn't it traditionally that the elves and the dwarves are yeah they don't get each other <laughs> yeah so they like, don't get along so except why this is just a nice because it's an no, OC. i mean these ocs are just copying the fellowship that's why oh that's true yeah you see yeah. And, and that's the also, first thing about this you, game just because your people are not you know too friendly with other people doesn't mean you just are a dick to everybody that is of that people come on i mean no. that's how racism works my dude yeah. yeah, but not every person is racist. Yeah, it, you know, individuals versus. I'm pretty sure every ver every person is racist when you're an elf in the middle in middle, <laughs> except for Legolas. He's one of the good ones. <laughs> the only good elf. Yeah, but no, like, uh, uh, like whenever, yeah, you see, oh. we have an evil mode, and we will, uh, I w we'll cut to that actually. Oh. Our first evil mode, but I want to say real quick, whenever there's a a, a cutscene with the OCs. Those I don't want us to talk over too much because they, oh, okay. like the epic scenes, who gives a shit? There's a hundred of them, and it's mostly just rehashing stuff in the movie. But those are special. Look out! Those tentacles are powerful. <laughs> Again, I, 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 I saw that. that somebody on, fetish. And in a number of places, people kept quoting that because they thought that line was especially dumb. It's uh, like a, it, it was that's and it, it, it achieved like a minor meme status. It is pretty funny. <laughs> Wow, she did so little damage. Do these... Like, do these... Because peop um, people would, like, you know... I'll explain it here in a second, but, like, people would, like, you know, obviously, like, make, like, you know, hentai jokes with it. Uh, yeah, Barathor yeah. were saying that, and then it's, like, a scene from... You can see the connections. You can make them. Yeah. Do, do these battles use the stats that you've given, like, the, the points you've given? Not at all. It, oh, the, thank God. As it jumps from, like, fight to fight, the team will be at varying levels of strength wow. and the different evil modes the for the most part they're pretty easy with a few exceptions because you don't have a lot of attacks 
like most of the time. A lot of these guys, like the, the bow users, can just fire a shot, that's it. See, that's all he has. Hmm. But in some of the later ones, the fellowship will be weakened from when you have them, but like, you know, they're not a, they're not a, a, a they don't like export your data. They are exist for this fight only, so they'll have like skills that your team doesn't have and such. This is like a pre built battle. Yeah. It's like a kind of like a puzzle fight, I guess. Kind of like a puzzle fight, except you d usually don't have anything you can do to solve the puzzle other than just attack, attack, attack. Sure. Oh. So it's oh, that was such a limp was arrow. Very basic solution. Yeah. And the worst one is not the uh, last one. It's actually the pretty much the middle level of the game. The two middle levels have the most difficult evil modes because. I actually don't know why. I don't know why they designed the way they are. But you'll see when we get there. They're the only ones I had to retry. Because on hard, the evil modes... And the difficulty affects it a lot. Like on easy, they're all trivial. On hard, again, those middle ones, you have to get lucky and just hope the party doesn't use certain skills. Or you're just doomed. Oh. Dang. <laughs> Gosh. It is kind of funny to see them... Uh, for how annoying they can be in the cutscenes, it's kind of funny to just see them get owned. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes it great. They're so annoying in the cutscenes, I love to see them get owned. Yeah. And you see they just use random stuff, like why would he use Creature Bane against... That only works on the animals. I mean, maybe he's racist. Yeah. Oh, those animals. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, look at this UI going crazy, yeah. that's great. <laughs> just lying dead on the ground. You see, it's weakening like you know slash, it. more like weak slash. Yeah, I mean yeah. that just go that just gives us a nice demonstration of why you don't make her do sword things. Yeah, look at her. I love her stance too. Just arm flopped at her side, the other arm holding up the sword. It actually looks exactly like Scorpion's idle stance from Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, where he would just he would just stand straight up. His lead arm just hanging at his side, his other arm held up in a fist. Yeah. And it's like, wow, you couldn't hire even, you know, I don't know, your 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 you uncle pay who took like ten dollars more to get him to lift his other arm. Well, I mean, I mean more like pay somebody who knows anything about martial arts oh, to yeah. you know supervise the move, so it's not just people doing random ass stuff with the digitization. <laughs> yeah. Dwarven. Unless, sleep. Unless Ed Boon was like, oh man, yeah, you've got to have this dumb stance where you just stand up and hold up one arm. <laughs> oh my god, that, that, that camera animation. angle really highlighted how bad an animation that is. Yeah. yeah. All of these are just... Sweet. You'll get to see it when the computer does it. Ooh, oh gosh. Nice. You'll get to see it when the computer does it in one of the later evil modes, but his like arrows of sleep is just... Ridiculous! It's like the most bloomy bloom effect you've ever seen. Oof. You can you notice how little health they have too? Yeah. Yeah. They have only yes. like like 250 health. And then he fight. even misses. That's it. Uh, you sad little Wait. dwarf. Unfortunately, had uh, he's got a little more in the tank. He can stand up. I think you Dang. mean you sad big dwarf croucher. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, he is actually quite large for a dwarf. He's just crouching. I don't know why they made him crouch. Yeah, and this is really weird. Wait, you get to... You never fought... Nazgul? Yeah, other than... Why Nazgul? Well, there was a scripted death fight, but not... Yeah. You never fought him with the party. Oh, well, at least we get to see some of his moves. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. He has three moves, none of them cost anything. Even though he has 134 action points, none of his moves cost anything. I mean, he just he just has the action points to show off. Yeah. yeah Look she at can how heal. many she action points I have. Mm. And this is annoying because it's not really that lowers armor value. This is annoying because it's not really hard. It just takes a long time. It takes a while for you to just hack away at them. So is this set later in the campaign? No, like it's only it's only recreating fights from from how that far area. Got. Yeah, so the, I guess this is supposed to be like a little bit of a fantasy fight from um 
you know, like like you get to do the scripted death cutscene okay. again, I guess. Yeah. So you'll for unlock other e evil mode. <laughs> for each area, yeah. We went, we the first area was a Regian. We left a Regian and went to Moria. Okay. And so that unlocked the evil mode. So when uh, we so once you complete Moria, Moria, you'll get a bunch of Moria battles. Yeah. And the advantage to doing evil mode is it will give you items for the main campaign. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Also, I love the way for Ra for Wraith Thrust, the way the, the Nazgul just kind of sidles up to the person he's gonna stab. Gives yeah. him a poke, yeah. Like, that's one of the things I love about these, like, if it was just a single person charging at a single target, right, it would be, it would be fine, I guess. Except that, like, in turn-based combat, you always see them, like, sashay up to their opponent, even though their opponent is surrounded by allies, and then, like, take one swing and then walk back. And it's like... Yeah, which Aw. is especially noticeable so on uh, on Barathor, where he just turns around and runs back. At least Idriel, you know, jumps backwards yeah, to get back like, to start being... Look, just... look at Hadod, look at Hadod go. Like, the Wraith... The, the, the See, Wraith I think this is the coolest will, looking like, attack, but it's also the slowest animation. Like, stab, and then he slides back. Yeah, yeah, like that's But Haddon's like, yeah, and then he turns around and goes, okay, I have to go home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mom was calling me for dinner. Oh my gosh, yeah, this is the... Dang, really Haddon fight. can take a beat. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just this eternal fight. Yeah, just like, uh, Belathor and Idriel just taking a little nap while the Nazgul oh, stabs okay, there we their go. dwarf friend repeatedly. Until finally yeah. Dwarf Friend is like, yeah, yeah so no, you, I've had enough. You essentially just get a set of elf stones for hat on. What are well, elf stones? Other people, so. um, everyone, I explained it a little bit in the last video. Every party member can equip four elf stones and they just boost different things. Oh, okay. It gave us, and they range in quality from crack, crack. polished, and then there's like perfect superior or something like that. Hella. Actually, I don't think you ever get the perfect ones, except for, uh, well, I don't want to give it away. Nice, nice. Idri I, I just noticed that Idriel's spirit is 42. That's nice. Yeah, so we have the Elfstone and Nimble Crafting. I think I equipped this here, but I ended up not using it. What it lets you do, it lets you craft items, but I don't, I, I never need to do so. And it's super stupid, the way the skill tree works for that. So there's like 10 different items you can craft, but you start off only being able to craft one. That's fine. But it works just like you have to craft in combat, and it works the same way the other skill trees do. The more you use skills in the tree, the more you unlock, right? Look at him go. Are you following me? Yeah. All right, well, guess what? You have to craft 50 of the first item just to unlock the next item. Oh, that's bad. You have to craft, like, you'll end up having to craft literally like a thousand items to unlock everything. What is the fucking point? Tread carefully in the dark. Most of them are useless, too. Enter a world. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like in, um... Move swiftly, for if you do I mean, this is kind of a find you. lame comparison, but in, in, in Skyrim, to get your smithing up, you know, in, a real, in the real world, you would imagine uh, somebody wouldn't waste materials. They would, they would craft things they needed and they would get better at crafting as they made more things or they would make things and sell them in in skyrim uh, the most efficient way to to do things is to just craft iron daggers so you just go like oh here i you know i've got iron i've got leather it doesn't matter whether or not i'm trying to get better at you know crafting dwarven stuff or whatever I just craft hundreds of iron daggers and sell them, or give them away, or just drop them on the ground. Yeah, and considering in this game there's and no now way to sell anything. Great at, you know, smithing anyway. Yeah, I mean, there's no shops in this game too, so you'll end up with stacks of useless items trying to get to the good ones. And you, again, the only ones you need are the super rare ones that you can only get in chests and stuff anyway, like Morgul Decay, which removes all the armor. Most of the items you get are stuff like. Increase one ally's resistance against blunt damage for a temporary period of time. Yippee skip, that's worth wasting a turn on. Oh, hey. Another... Temporary resistance against one type of damage for one person. Or I yeah, could that's not apply good. a buff, a debuff, or an attack. Gee. Yeah. I wonder what I'll do. <laughs> 
Why does the octopus sink so deep? Oh yeah, yeah and th that's why he didn't die, because we have to fight him again, so... That means Elagos gets his actual last stand. Oh my. And again, maybe... Maybe I pop him out more in the early game, I don't know. Once... I know... Once I get the combo going with Hat Hot Edge on Paracord, you're not going to see much of the other people. Except for Aiden. But he is the last person you get, so he's a little while off, so... Hmm. I just think it's funny that he came back, like, how, how did he even get here? Did he, like, swim through the, the sewers underneath Moria? I mean, who knows what kind of crazy tunnels or under underground waterways there are. Yeah, I think Gandalf I mean, should have just... Of, at the bottom of Moria, there is a, a lake, and, I mean, he falls forever, and then he, he lands in the lake with the, uh, the Balrog. That's true. So, I mean, in that case, I think Gandalf should have uh, just cast, you know, some scuba spell on everybody and had them all swim into Moria. Man. Yeah, after he fell for us. Yeah. I mean, nothing... Well, I mean, the Watcher like Water was able to swim um, underneath the gate and pop out here on the other side. We just walked into Moria. Yeah. It's that easy. No. God, this what, fight is what so What is with that boring. delay? Like, that's so awkward. Like, it just kind of sits there for, like three seconds, and then finally you get to go again. I mean, it seems like the animation file must have been, like, had some extra on there or whatever, and then, like, they never trimmed. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Like and maybe it may here. not be the animation. Maybe it was the sound or something. You know? Yeah, like maybe I a sound know. effect has some empty space at the end of it. And yeah. Get well, re regardless yeah, well, it's of only the, the reason, attacks that send them plunging beneath the water, though. Like, it, Israel's it got right back to it, but, like, essentially so then, the Flaming so Fury... So then I'm guessing it's probably something like, you know, he goes underneath the water and there's some kind of splash sound effect or a splash visual thing, and it, you know, it's got a little axe on it. Yeah. I, I do like the attention that he is missing an arm. He, yeah, I was about to say, he's missing one arm. Yeah. Or two. There's another one on the on the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, because remember they chopped him off in the yeah, movie? Yeah. And in the book. Did they, did it supposed to find the book? I don't know. I, I know what happens so, yeah. in the movie. Oh a, shoot! A we didn't minute. say the name of the. We didn't. Uh, uh, Melon. That's now we're allowed. It. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tom Bombadil. Yeah. Big friend and enter. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I was just trying to make it clear that you know we were true book nerds. Yeah. I I, lo I love. I can't. I cannot tell. I legitimately can't tell if people love or hate Tom Bombadil. I I thought he was great. Because people always seem to mention him in this... Yeah, like... Like, in this, like, quasi mocky way, but I can't tell if they're being affectionate or if they legitimately think Tom Bombadil is way too whimsical for the book. I, or, yeah, I mean... Or, or just, because he also, he's also a big waste of time. Uh, and Unless, because he's a, a waste of time in the eyes of people who do not read fantasy often enough to know what world building is, you know. And the book, in the series or of books that Or just people who don't give a shit about world building. Well, I just mean, like, you know, a lot of people who don't read fantasy often don't realize how much heavy world building is usually important, you know. Yeah. Rip Alagos. Like, Tolkien established that, you know. Yeah. And, and so it's like you'll get people who are like, I don't understand the whole Tom Bombadil section, and it's like, you know. It's kind of hard to explain unless you were. <laughs> That's one heck of you either a get revive it or you animation, don't. by the way. Yeah, the Ravi animation is actually pretty cool. This kind of gets to float for a few seconds. I'm good again. No. In the but no, like, because even the reviews I read for the game, people were like, you know, it's only stuff from the movie, so no Tom Bombadil guys. And it's like, oh man, I knew you were gonna mention him. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, like. It's kind of a glaring omission as far as the, the like, books to movie. Considering well, he was originally going to be in the movie, remember? Haven't you seen those shots where, like, they no, had no, a guy? No, 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 I'm just saying in the final release, right? Like, he's, yeah. he's, he's kind of a glaring omission, not because it's, like, a, a, a major loss for the movie from the perspective of, like, a movie-going audience they probably wouldn't have liked seeing uh, a long sequence of the movie that's just there to flesh out the world. But... Uh, they do spend a lot of time in the book there. Well, and well speaking of uh, flesh out, don't forget that they also spend quite a bit of time naked during that scene, so. Yeah. 
We lost a lot of, uh, you know, slash <laughs> fanfic. Elijah Wood, right if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because in the book, they all get naked and just run around in a field, and I'm just like, man, there are so many, like, slash fanfic writers out there who are just, like, crying over the loss of that scene. <laughs> but, uh, oh, great. Here's another epic scene. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget, in the Hobbit movie, we, the elves didn't come out and sing that song where they say the uh, the faggots are reeking. Yeah. Which, uh, I remember I, uh, seeing a thread where someone was just like, why did why did the elves say that? Like, what a horrible thing to say. And it's like, you dumbass. Like, he really thought he, they were, he was just like, Jared, he thought it was the slur. Like, I might as well just be like, uh, gay smell bad. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, I'll just either write that, that into he's a song a, right now. Either that or he's an old English man, and so they're talking about the fires are burning. Yeah. But no, they, they, I guess this person just... It's not just that they didn't know. They genuinely believed that the elves abruptly Insane. were like, by the way... Like, in the song. Or nothing. Yeah. In song yeah. form. Hey, did you know? I will yeah. never mention this again or before. Yeah. And somebody else in the thread it, it tried to explain, they also explained it wrong. They said it was referring to the British, like, dish, which is kind of like a meatball, you, you know, faggots and gravy. Oh, um, I've never heard and of And it's like, and someone said, it's obviously not referring to the food. What? Why would you refer to your food as reeking? And also, that's like a, a very pastoral sort of food. Elves wouldn't cook that. It's, uh, it's they, and they explain what it actually is. Um, it is based on a Scottish phrase where reeking, um, does refer to, like, a fire. Yeah, and, like, like faggots so can be a bundle of wood. Yeah, yeah, so they're saying, you know, like, come on into our hall, you know, we have the fires all set up, and we're ready to go. Throw a big elf party. But I really, and then the rest of the time was people being like, man, I really can't wait to see this in the Hobbit special edition. <laughs> in the, I think um, that... Okay. Oh, uh, I was just saying, that's the biggest difference, I think, between the books and the movies, is you're missing all the songs and poems. Yeah. yeah. Like, the closest we get is uh, Pippin singing a song that, uh, I forget the context of the original, but he definitely does not sing it in Denethor's court. <laughs> yeah. In, um, in the Lord of the Rings um, Fellowship of the Ring game for Xbox and... I think they also ported it to PC. But I never played that one. I only played the Return if I remember King correctly, and the Two Towers. If I remember correctly, the, the, the Fellowship of the Ring one was... Um, <laughs> when they ported it to PC, they cut a bunch of quests. Um, if, I, if I remember correctly. But also, the that's based on the book and not based on the movie so much. So you... Well, yeah, because they're, they're separate estates. Yeah, so you... Uh, you do, in fact, meet Tom Bombadil, and you get to hear the original intended tune of Tom Bombadil's. Yeah, Tom like, Bombadil, jiggle. Tom Bombadil, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> by Waterwood and Hill, by the Reed and Willow. Like, you get to hear yeah. the actual <laughs> tune. And I was like, oh, that's nice. But it ends on a really weird note. Like a literal... Uh, like literally note. a weird note. It, it goes... Oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, oh, by water, wood, and hill, by the reed and willow, by fire, sun, and moon, hearken now and hear us, oh, Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us, duh. That, that does sound a bit off. Dun, 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 it ends dun. on an extra, duh, and it's like, what? Yeah. There's not even a word there. Yeah, well, like the Hobbit game, um, which you Also, he looks like he's having so much trouble with those stairs. Yeah. Like, I said, I said there's a the oh, fuck me. I said there's a universal speed, but maybe not because I, 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 maybe it's just in my head. But he feels slower. <laughs> I think it's because he's crouching. He just seems to be slower. Yeah, well, yeah he, his, he's, he's gonna walking. have terrible back problems. Yeah, I, yeah like, his, that's like a horrible that po posture. Yeah, that posture is gonna mess him up. Well, the thing, maybe he was just unusually tall for a dwarf like that famous Hobbit from. The opening of the book, Who Could Ride a Horse? What, what Do you remember his name? I don't remember. Because he's like another meme where everyone's just like, oh man, it's like that one hobbit who could ride a horse. I gotta say though, the... Because, uh... yeah, you said you hadn't read the books. In the opening of of the... Because they originally, it's supposed to be like one novel in three volumes, right? So in the opening of The Fellowship of the Ring, it has like a history of hobbits. And uh, the one detail everyone always seems to remember is it says that there was this one hobbit who was big enough to ride a, a horse and 
He was Honestly, really I have my copy of the book downstairs. I should just go grab it. <laughs> I have a copy of the book on my bookshelf across the room, but I'm not gonna grab it. Except we're gonna fight albino cave wargs. Huh. Okay. Wow, the way that, like, distorted his body looked really strange. Yeah, but that that's might be my favorite attack animation, because it's, like, the fastest ever, the Flaming Fury. That's Fury's. true, yeah. Look at it, it's yeah. just like, he just points, boom, and we're, we're right back to it. So, y'all, have you seen the movies? I have seen the movies, oh, okay. I haven't read the books. Yeah. Oh. But it's a real shame that they didn't have access to the books, because everyone always said, you know, yeah, we had the three... We had, like, you know, the games based on the movies. We had the game based on the Fellowship of the Ring book. But it's like, you know, especially with Tolkien being so passionate about world building, wouldn't it have been nice to be able to explore a different age of Middle-earth? Or, you know, if that was too out there, maybe something else that was going on. Did we really have to only see video game versions of the thing that we watched and read? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know that probably wasn't the mentality of publishers at the time, because nowadays it's more common to be like, be, you know, essentially your OC in the world that you enjoy. Yeah, you, you know? see this especially with, like, Star Wars games. Exactly, like, you know. That's why my favorite Star Wars game, um, for a number of reasons, is still good old Dark Forces, well, Dark Forces 1 and 2. I love the story in those games, and I love that it's not just the movies, again. <laughs> but it's also really cool that they, they, they have taken the, the a bunch of elements from the movies and you see people like Mon Mothman and, uh, and uh, oh my god who's the guy who says it's a trap what's his name oh, Admiral yeah. Akbar oh, Admiral yeah, Akbar Admiral, Admiral, Admiral Akbar yeah. yeah yeah so you know I, I, I love that sort of stuff but like it's a shame that the license forced us to we, we do get to play as new characters but we don't see a new perspective because they're just copies of the actual fellowship following yeah. the fellowship <laughs> yeah it's, it's the, just, kind of the worst of both worlds. It's, it it's is. The, yeah. It's the B team following the A team. Cause exactly. Because like, having, cause like having, having a new character means we can explore a new storyline. That's the best part of that, the new storyline. Having the old character means we can experience things from their perspective. That's the best part of that. Having a new character exploring an old storyline, who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, yeah. And they try to, like, have... They try to, like, give Verithor his own part in the story, and that part's not handled poorly necessarily, but what, the fact that because of the licensing issue, he, he's forced to go to all the same places and do all the same things, yeah. means that the fact that in the cutscenes he is given an extra role doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like, hmm. you know, I, I how about this? Uh, I think it would have been cool if, like, they made a game set like you know where you're following the party and the whole point isn't just that you're just you just happen to be following the party your job is to find the party and like you're some kind of maybe you're even an enemy agent or something right and you're like you're you're tracking them down to to attack them and then they it could be a very different gameplay style than just like hack and slash or roll rpg or something but I, I, don't, yeah. I don't really know. Just, like, something to kind of change things up. Because then you can license the scenes, license those settings, without having to worry about, um, you know, the other settings in the world that you could have used if you had licensing for that. But yeah. at the same time, you, you don't have to make carbon copy characters and have them do the same things. Yeah, it's just sort of unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, did we get to see how long saving takes this time? Yeah, I left this one in so you could save for yourselves. That one's actually not too bad. Oh, that I think later bad. on it takes more and more time. Did it I? Might be what would like, travel mean there? Um, you, can it, you can warp. You can warp to different areas. Oh, from save ah. point to save point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, like there's a predefined save point in every area that you know when you um, travel, it'll take you back to. So, like, right now, the only place we can travel is a, a region. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Where we started. Really makes but sense. It makes sense. Yeah. That's why I made use of it later on to go back and grind up my skill trees. Hmm. Wow, his face looks weird. Oh, that's a face. Oh, uh, look. Goblin that's a cool thrust. animation. A, it, it, it is a cool animation, but it's not a thrust. It's a slash. It's another weird upward slash. It's like the people in charge of naming the moves and the people doing the animations were like doing different things. Yeah, they had 
Guardian Strike, critical hit. Sword made no contact with the enemy. Yeah, because it's universal animation, but... Yeah, that was a flash. Still... Do we need wow. to do we do we need to see a close up of that guy twice every time he fires an arrow? Sometimes these yeah, I don't know. These sometimes these attacks have very uh, exciting names, and other times they have very boring names. Yeah. You know, like Goblin Bane is obviously just like there's Goblin Bane, there's Orc Bane, there's you know all these different Banes. Goblin Arrow. But like Goblin Arrow, he's a yeah. goblin and he fires an arrow. Yeah. That's kind of lame. You figured it, Bob, you solved the mystery. Like every Wild spell has a cool so name. Cool, you don't yeah. see this called Big Water. <laughs> big Water. Or well, no, I'm sorry, a, well, Elf Water. Well, if it was Big Water, it would be a Land Before Time game. Mm, that's mm. true. The big man made water fall. Yeah. I do like that the game does also give experience, it looks like, to the person who, to the people who are not in your party. Yeah, well, it's not. whoever's um, doing. If it's a quest, it's whoever is. Um, yeah, they're watching. Yeah. Oh, oh, you meant like after a fight? Yeah, yeah they get like. Me, yeah, that's. Uh, I think another part of like the streamlining, in case you like accidentally power gamed without trying to. Like, if you pick the favorite party, then then later you were like, oh shit, I probably really need this other character. Fortunately, they have been keeping up a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. I think they get like maybe like a quarter of the experience, so they do fall behind. Though, it you know, it is keeping just these three out in front is a huge advantage. That's why I did not have to actually grind any levels to win the to beat the game. I could just do only the scripted fights. Nice. Yeah, that that's the thing I really liked about uh, Super Mario RPG is once you get like four people or five you like everybody still gets the same experience so nobody ever falls behind in that game yeah like even if you like even if you never like even if you at some point swap out Mallow and yeah, you never use fun. him again he still <laughs> gets back in when you know when you do swap him back in for because you want to play uh, with him then he just he's on level he's on he's, he's on par I mean when people when, when Sword and Shield like Pokemon Sword and Shield came out People complain so much because you now get XP across your entire party um, uh, when when you complete a battle. People complain so much about that, even though you don't get like you still get a lot more XP for the Pokemon who at, who were actually in the fight. You just get a little XP for the Pokemon outside the fight. And I'm like, I don't. I don't understand what the problem is here, because, like... Well, also, it's like... If you were trying to level up your Pokemon anyways, all you would be doing was swapping them in. And I guess I understand if it was something like you're trying to manipulate your EVs in some way, but that's really easy to do. Like, you can still do that very easily. Well, it's stupid anyway. All it is is it's A, like, oh, it's different, so it sucks, but it's also, like, this weird thing where, like, people will say stuff like that, oh, it makes the game too easy, but I'm like, it doesn't change the difficulty, because yeah, all, all, it, all it does, all it does is remove your time invested. Like, it's all these people who get pissed off that you don't have to grind as much. Yeah, I completely yeah. forgot this guy's absolutely immune to fire spells. <laughs> he just takes a fire blast to the face, and he's like, nope. Yeah. But, he but you know what I mean? Down, but he, that, he, that's why they're upset. That is why they're upset because now all of a sudden they don't have to grind as much. It's like the grinding is not the, the fun part. part. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that's the reducing mean, grind that's not does not make the true. game. That's not necessarily true. Some people might might enjoy the the, the sort of methodical, you know. Yeah, and, you know, I don't I don't mind grinding. Fine. Like right now, I'm working on playing through Dragon Quest Eight. That's a very traditional JRPG. There is grinding. There's plenty of it. But like, and I don't mind the, doing the combat. But it's like. Oh, oh. <laughs> I see you found your way deep into Moria's ethereal miles. He's a magic dwarf. The wealth of this realm. Hard as dragon scales, but light as a feather. He's like a Russian dwarf. Where's everybody else? Turns out there's a hundred ways through Moria. <laughs> yeah, you know what's great about uh, Elagos? He never uses his bow in a single cutscene. 
Oh. And he only uses so his sword. So it's sword, yeah. Yeah, that he never has on him in combat or uses in combat. Classic moves. But no, like like I said, the grind, it's, it's just a case of people think that any change that makes the game shorter must be making it easier, but it might. Not, but that's not the case. It might just be reducing something that is time consuming but not difficult. Yeah, it's and it's that you like, want reduced. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's always weird when like there's like a little quality of life change that doesn't affect difficulty at all, and yet people complain, "Oh, that makes it easier." Yeah, like or it takes away the challenge. Does, like it, a thing. Like, like a, that was a big thing when Monster Hunter World released. Like, some people actually were pissed off that pickaxes were no longer single-use items and you just always had a pickaxe on you so you could mine ores while out on a hunt. And people got really upset over that. And it's like, why? It's not a skill thing. It just saves you time. Yeah. So you it can hunt more monsters. Time, plus, plus, the, the it's pickaxes It's not like the no money longer... I would be spending it's... on pickaxes is going to now pile up in my bank account and I'm no longer gonna have like yeah, exactly like and, and the thing is too like pickaxes not only were they single use items they took up inventory space yeah, that you could use for just yeah. having things that and it's actually not a, it's, matter like I would kind of understand if it was like a game where the game's sort of focus was realism and then like they took away or, something that made it realistic in the or resource the management maybe I kind of understand like... that but like this isn't the case here pickaxes in real life are not single use no and you, just you wouldn't have a reasonably be carrying it. more than one ever yeah and it's also yeah. like that's also just a weird thing that's common in Japanese RPGs because in Record of Lodos lore it also has single use pickaxes that take up inventory no, they stack, so it's... Uh, no, they don't stack, actually. Fuck me, no, they just take up space inventory. It's the worst. I mean, oh, I think depending that sounds on... sounds awful. I think depending on um, when the the game series started, it may be a relic from, a you know, a time in, in gaming where the idea was that everything was basically a lock and key, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, every, every item... The way God designed it, item, yeah. <laughs> you know? So you have yeah. to use the key to unlock a thing. And Look then at that stupid the jumping attack! <laughs> that is so dumb. I'm sorry, I can't get over that. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. It's like Barathor's dumb upward swing, but even worse, now he like sort of awkwardly holds it and jumps while trying to like lift, swing it up. It's like the most awkward motion you could ever use to hit something with an axe. Yeah. Also, the point of realism. I, I kind of have to chuckle at anybody who wants realism in their Monster Hunter game. Yeah. Like, yeah. what what the heck? <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, I don't mean... I don't mean... Well, Monster Hunter is realistic. I just mean, like, when somebody mm -hmm. makes... When somebody's, like, complaining about uh, something being changed for the sake of convenience, I'll give that argument a, a total pass if... Oh, my God. If... if if the point of the game was to begin with realism, yeah, like if right. it was a sim and they make it, they simplify, and they make they it less sim. Yeah, like I sucks. understand. Then it's like, yeah, okay, I see. You've you've taken out some of the game elements of the game that made it unique. Um, mm -hmm. Sure, but yeah. but most of the time that's not the case. But then there's yeah, of like, course the classic argument of you know are realistic games you know more fun and again I'll uh, that's you know. totally that's totally subjective that I mean, completely like, yeah, that, depends that's completely on subjective like, everything but, uh, like as time goes on I understand the appeal of like super realistic games mm. less and less because it's like oh I get when I was younger I was like oh man this is so cool because it's realistic you know and now I'm like yeah why would I ever play steep when I can just go play SSX tricky or SSX 3 I think it really <laughs> depends on the genre like recently I started up another playthrough of Skyrim because I don't know I I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. God, they give you so many of these oh. epic scenes early yeah. on. <laughs> um, and so, like, I've been playing Skyrim again, and I play, I'm play, i playing it with a, a couple of realism mods installed, and I think it's made the game a lot better. Specifically, the mods that I've got, I've got a needs mod, so you need to eat and drink and sleep. Um, otherwise, your character suffers massive penalties. Um, your character can be uh, wet and cold, um, so, That's like, exposure to the elements is a, a bigger, bigger deal. So you have to, like, set up your tent in a place where the wind's not going to, you know, just fuck right. you up. 
and uh, I've been personally not waiting, like using the wait function. Um, instead, I try to like pass the time doing something because it's never made sense in in the Elder Scrolls games that you can hit the wait button and say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna wait 23 hours right now. Just stand in one spot and wait for 23 hours." Like that's never oh, made man. any sense. But like the other thing I did was I disabled fast travel, and it has made the entire journey way more interesting and it's given me a better sense of time about see, like, I how would, long things take I and would that's way absolutely more interesting. hate that no, I, it's I, way I, more interesting because Skyrim is such a dull game otherwise you fast travel to a dungeon you stab some stuff, you leave you fast travel back to town there's no know, story there you just go like, oh, I stabbed a thing okay, I mean, no, that's, why I, that's why I, I just you know done the easier thing and just never played Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that's why I stopped playing it for a long time, but I'm like, I want to give like, this another shot. And see, I'm I, way I, more into it now. See, see, I hate, like, survival things. I hate, like, having to worry about, uh, you know, food, water meter, and stuff. Not not because oh, it's one of those things where it's usually not more difficult. It just It's one more thing to have to be annoyed by. That, me me personally. It's, it's not, but like it's said, not it's, super it's subjective. difficult or anything. It it's is just, subjective. I just... Yeah. It's, it's not for me. I prefer yeah. games where I just interact directly with the... Like, as far as RPGs, like, you know, I like ones that are really mechanically dense, and I can come up with a, a strategy. See, the thing is, like, Skyrim's not mechanically dense, so to make it mechanically dense, you have to add stuff to it. Yeah, that's otherwise, why I never it's played just, it. Cause... Otherwise, it's just kind of boring. Like, you can increase the difficulty, but that just means that you deal more damage, and they de or they deal more damage, and then you maybe deal a little bit more damage, but, yeah. like... They have more health and they deal more damage, so then it's like... Okay. Yeah, well, and, and again, that's why I've never played it. And people are like, oh man, you never played Skyrim? I'm like, yeah, because, you know, I've I don't care. I, I don't give a shit Skyrim. if everyone else in the world plays it. It's not for me. <laughs> but, Fair. well, of course, Lord of the Rings, the Third Age is definitely for me. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why this video series exists. Yeah, but that is the end of episode two. Um, I know we kind of went into podcast mode, but that's because there's not a lot going on right now. The later parts of Moria, we'll start to see some more cutscenes. Uh, and maybe some more interesting fights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Looking forward. 